you can draw this and procreate. During this procreate tutorial, I will be guiding you through the steps of creating this blue house in an autumn landscape. We'll start with a bunch of simple basic shapes. And once we have all those shapes, we will start adding textures. And during this tutorial, we will also be creating our own brush. Once you have followed this Procreate tutorial all the way till the end, I'm sure you'll feel proud and perhaps you want to share your result. If you are sharing it on Instagram, then don't forget to tag me in the image, not just in the description, because that way I will be able to find your work and maybe we'll see it in the next video. Just like these flotastic results from my friends at Patreon. It's the place you need to go if you want to do even more Procreate tutorials. I have more than 100 there, ranging from beginner level to more advanced levels. But now let's get started with this tutorial. For this tutorial, we will be working on a canvas that is 2300 pixels by 3000 pixels and the color profile is set to sRGB. I have linked the color palette in the description, it's totally free just like the Procreate brushes we will be working with during this tutorial. We will be using brushes that are already in the app and some brushes from my free Procreate treasure chest. If you don't already have it, go to freefromflow.com to get it. And now go and grab your pencil or your finger and let's get started. All right, first thing we'll do is let's change our background color. Go to the layer menu, tap background color, and then pick this first color in the first row. And then we are going to work on layer one. We are going to start by creating our blue house. And for the color for our house, we are going to start with this one over here. It's the third color in the second row. And we are going to create a rectangular shape. Now you could do that by using a brush like the monoline brush, but whenever you do that, you get those rounded corners. Your rectangle might be a little bit skewed. So an easy way to get a perfect rectangle is by using the selection tool. You can go to the S shape ribbon, then set it to rectangle and then use color fill over here. And now let's just drag our pen over our screen like this to create a rectangular shape about this size. I can see that if you release your pencil, that rectangle gets filled with the blue color we have selected. Now we can go and tap the S shape ribbon again. Then we'll tap the arrow right next to it. And here at the bottom, go to snapping and turn on snapping. Now we can make sure that our rectangle is in the center of our canvas by dragging it around. And once you see that vertical line, you'll know that it's in the center. Let's place it about here. Now we'll make a new layer on top of this one. So go to the layer menu, the two little squares, then tap the plus for a new layer. And then for our color, we are going to grab this one, the second color in the second row. It's a bit of a darker blue than we have just used. And now we are going to make another rectangle. Let's go and grab the S shape ribbon again, the selection tool. It's still set to rectangle and color fill. And we are going to make a rectangle that's a little bit bigger than what than the one we just created, a bit like this. And I'll go to the move and transform tool again, the little arrow. Let's move it down a little bit to about here. And now we are going to turn on the stored here at the bottom. And now before we go and pull on this corner, let's go to snapping and turn on magnetics. Because that way, when we pull it to the right, it'll stay horizontal. Well, let's pull it to the right to about here. And let's do the same on this side. And let's pull the top parts inward a little bit until it nicely snaps. You'll see that blue vertical line. And now we'll switch to warp over here. And we are going to push the sides inward a little bit. Go here, then tap and hold and push it inward a little bit. Do that over here as well. So that the roof gets a nice little curve. I just want to push these parts a bit more inward. So something like this, then tap the arrow again to get out of the menu. Next, we are going to make a new layer on top of our roof layer. Let's tap the plus and we'll go back to that previous color. That's the third color in the second row. And now for our brush, 
we are going to use the monoline brush, which you can find under calligraphy. The opacity of this brush needs to be at 100% and the size, you can set that to 10% for instance. Now we are going to draw a triangle over here. Now roughly draw a triangle over here, then go to edit shape and select triangle. If you don't have the option for triangle over here, you might need to try again. Make sure that you end your line where you started. So now we have our triangle and let's use these corners. I want this triangle to be on the left side of the house. And I want it to be a little bit lower than the roof. So something like this should be perfect. Now we can drag in the color to fill our triangle. And now I want to duplicate it. We can go to the layer, slide to the left and tap duplicate. I go to the move and transform tool, the little arrow, then go to uniform here at the bottom and let's move it to the right, make it smaller. And then place it here on the right side of the roof. Then tap the arrow again to get out of the menu. And now I want to have these lighter blue parts. I want to have them together on one layer. Now we can already merge these top parts, but we can't put this one on top of our roof yet. When we do, you see that it covers the roof. Our way to fix that is by going to this layer to tap it then use select, then turn off color fill over here, then go back to the layer, layer one, tap it and use clear. Now it's not covering the roof anymore and we can merge these layers together by pinching them. Now, before we continue working on the house, I would like to work on the environment, on the garden around this house. Now first let's make a new layer by tapping the plus and we'll drag it underneath the house. Then for the color, we are going to grab this one over here. It's the fourth color in the first row. And now you can either use the rectangle selection again, or you can just use the monoline brush. Doesn't really matter. Let's zoom out a little bit. And let's make a horizontal line a little bit above the bottom of the house. And if you Hold your pen in place, it'll snap to the quick line. And if you have one finger on your screen, you'll be sure that it's perfectly horizontal. Also make sure that your line goes all the way from the left to the right, and then drag in the color to fill the area. Now we are going to make a new layer underneath this one. So tap the plus again, then drag this layer underneath. And then for our brush, I would like to use the script brush. And when you use the script brush, if you press harder with your pen, your stroke will become thicker. And if you press lightly, it'll be thin. But of course that only works if you are using a pressure sensitive pen like the Apple Pencil. Now for the color for this brush, we are going to use this fifth color in the first row. And we are going to use it to create some bushes behind our house. Now the opacity of this brush is at 100% and let's set the size to 15%. We are going to make some simple shapes right behind our house. So a bit like this, a bit like a simple cloud. Just make sure that you close the shape behind here before you drag in the color. Now we'll do the same thing on this side. Try to make it a little bit different than the other one. So you get some variation loop around. So the shape is closed and then drag in the color to fill it. Next, we are going to create some trees in our background. Again, we need a layer that is behind this one. So first you need to tap the plus for a new layer and then you need to drag it underneath this one. And for the color, we are going to use this one over here. It's the seventh color in the first row. And we are going to create some simple cloud like shapes again, but this time we'll create one in the upper right corner and in the upper left corner. So we'll make a shape like this, rounded shapes. And then over here, let's make a shape like this to make it a bit more playful. And then we'll drag in a color to fill it. Let's do the same over here. Simple call out like shapes, playful shape there, and then drag in the color. Next, we need the tree trunk and the branches. We want those to be on top of this area, but behind these bushes. 
So we can just tap the plus here to make a layer in between those layers. Then for the color, I actually want to use this color over here, the first color in the first row. And I realized I wanted to use a different color for the background. So let's go to the layer menu, tap background color, and set it to the second color in the first row. Then we'll continue working on this new layer we have created. Make sure that the color is set to that first color in the first row. And now we are going to make those tree trunks. Let's make a line going up like this and another one right next to it. And then we'll make these branches and one over here. And then make sure that you close the shapes over here as well before you drag in the color. Or you can just color it by hand. And to make this more tidy here at the top, tap and hold the eraser because that way it will switch to the script brush. And then we can just cut off part here and here there are leaves covering those parts of the, the branches. And then we'll do the same on the other side. So let's grab the brush again, make a line going up, another line right next to it, then a branch over here, and one over here. Color everything. And then grab the eraser again to erase the top parts here to make it nice and tidy. I feel like they might be a little bit high. We can just go to the move and transform tool here and drag these trunks down a little bit so that there's enough space at the top here for our leaves. Then tap the arrow again to get out of the menu. And then we'll continue moving to the front. I want to add some pumpkins to our scene and they need to be in front of the house. So first tap the layer with the house and then tap the plus. And then for our color, we are going to grab this one. It's the sixth color in the first row. And we are going to make nice big pumpkins. Start with a shape like this, then another one next to it. And then these rounded shapes at the bottom and also at the top. And then fill the shape color it in by hand. Let's see if it's big enough. Yeah, it's nice and big. Let's make another one over here. Shape like this, shape like this, then these rounded shapes like this. And then we can drag in the color to fill it. And I want to make some smaller pumpkins. We'll create those on a new layer. So let's tap the plus for a new layer and let's lower the opacity of this one a little bit. Two, for instance, something like 65% or 66. So we can easily see what we're doing because they are going to overlap a little bit. Make a shape like this, shape like that. Then these rounded shapes like this and then fill these areas. So we have a basic pumpkin shape. Then over here as well, let's make one small one here on the right side. First like this, then these rounded shapes here and then drag in the color. Then another one on the left side First two shapes like this, and then two more here in the front. Drag in the color, there. I think maybe we can move them up a little bit. So let's go to the arrow, then push them up. Let's turn off snapping and magnetics. We really don't need it over here. So let's push them upward a little bit. And let's go to the other layer, layer seven. Let's turn up the opacity again and then go to the arrow and then move these up as well like this. Then tap the arrow again 
And now for the little like stems, let's make a new layer on top of both of these. Let's tap the plus. Then for the color, let's grab this fourth color. And now let's zoom in a little bit. And let's just make a very simple shape here. Just a bit of a blob shape actually. Now let's move to the other one. Let's make a shape like that here as well. And on this one. And now let's switch to the eraser again and let's go along the edge to make these rounded shapes here as well. We'll mirror this area. It's going up right here and then make a little wobble here, here as well. Then over here, we'll do the same. So follow this little wobble and mirror it here and here as well. And for this one, we have a very big wobble here. Another one on the left and over here like this. Add a little bit over here. Now we have the stems for our pumpkins. The next thing we'll do is add a fence to the foreground of our illustration. We are going to use this color for that, the first color in the first row. And now for our brush, let's go back to the monoline brush. But before we make our circle, we do need to create a new layer on top because of course this is the layer with the little stems. So let's tap the plus. And now we are going to create a small little circle. So draw a circle, hold your pen in place, and then tap one finger on the screen to make sure that your circle is perfectly round. Then drag in a color, and then create a new layer on top of this one. So tap the plus, then go to the selection tool, set it to rectangle and turn on color fill. And now we are going to make a rectangular shape about the same width as the circle. Try to get close to that. Then tap the S shape ribbon again. Go to the move and transform tool. Let's zoom in a little bit. And here at the bottom under snapping, turn on snapping again. Now we are going to make it snap to the sides of the circle. You'll see that a vertical blue line. Now let's drag this up. Now, we do need to make sure to set it to freeform. I forgot that. Set it to freeform. So you can pull this handle until you see that horizontal blue line. And then these sides until you see that vertical blue line. Now it's nicely aligned. Then you can tap the arrow again. And now this is looking perfect for our fence. Let's merge these two layers by pinching them together. And we can go to the move and transform tool, the little arrow to change it a little bit. You can make it a little bit longer to about here. And make sure that it's going all the way to the bottom. And now we are going to duplicate this layer a couple of times. Go to the layer menu, drag to the left, tap duplicate, then go to the arrow tool to move it. We can push it to the side to here. Then we'll duplicate it again. So go to the layer menu, then drag to the left, tap duplicate and go to the arrow and drag this one to the left as well. I can see that, that this one is a little bit farther away. We can just go back to that layer, then go to the move and transform tool, push it a little bit closer. So we have the same spacing. Now let's go to the layers. Let's pinch them together and now let's duplicate them. Let's tap duplicate here and then go to the move and transform tool and put these on the right side. I want them to be a little bit more to the right. So one is moving out of sight like this. Then let's merge the layers together again. And then I want another one of these right here next to those. So let's just duplicate this layer, drag to the left, tap duplicate, then go to the move and transform tool. Let's flip it horizontal and then we'll move it all the way to the left until we have another one over here, which is almost out of sight. 
and tap the arrow again to get out of the menu and now we can merge these layers again. Next we'll make a new layer underneath this one, tap layer 9, then tap the plus for a new layer and for our brush we'll still be using the monoline brush. Now make a line from the left all the way to the right, hold your pen in place and then tap one finger on the screen for a perfectly horizontal line and we'll make another one right underneath. Hold one finger on your screen and then drag in the color to fill this, but we don't want it to be closed over here. So let's go to the selection tool, the S shape ribbon, set it to rectangle and turn off color fill. Now select this area like this, then go to the layer, tap it and use clear. I'll make a new layer on top by tapping the plus, then go to your brush, the model line brush. Let's zoom in a little bit. Let's make a little oval here. Hold your pen in place to make it snap to the quick shape. And then place it like this. We can use edit shaper at the top to make sure that it aligns with the top and bottom part of that part of the wood. I think this is looking good. Let's drag in a color to fill it. Now let's do the same on the other side. Let's again make an oval. Hold your pen in place. Then go to edit shape here at the top. Let's zoom in. And make sure that it nicely aligns with the top and bottom. Then drag in the color. And there we have our fence. Next I want to add a little path from this fence to our house. We'll need to do that on a layer that is on top of the grass, but behind our fence and behind our pumpkin. So tap layer three and tap the plus for a new layer. By the way, we can merge these two layers. Let's pinch them together. We just want that horizontal plank to be separate from the vertical ones. So don't merge those. Now on this new layer, we are going to use this color over here, the third color in the first row. Let's zoom out a little bit and let's make a curved line from here, from the center of the house to about here. Hold your pen in place to make it snap to the quick shape and then do the same over here. Curve like this. Hold your pen in place so you can change it a bit. You can also go to edit shape here at the top and change the curve a little bit. So we get a nice little path here. And tap the brush, then close the shape here. And then drag in the color to fill the area. Now we have all the parts of the garden. Let's continue working on the house. Let's start with an area for our door. Let's go to layer one over here. Tap the plus for a new layer on top. By the way, if you are running out of layers, try making your canvas a little bit smaller because that way your iPad can handle more layers. Now on this layer, we are going to work with a slightly lighter color, this fourth color in the second row. And let's use the selection tool again, the S shape ribbon, set it to rectangle and use color fill. And now we are going to make a rectangle in the center of the house like this. Then go to the move and transform tool, the little arrow, make sure that snapping is turned on and then make sure that it's nicely in the center of your canvas. So we're doing great. Let's tap the arrow and we are going to make a new layer again. Let's tap the plus for a new one. And now for our brush, we are going to use a brush from the treasure chest brush pack. Let's scroll up. There we have it. We are going to use the that's a line brush. And for the color, we are going to use this one over here. The first color in the second row. Now the opacity is set to 100% and let's set the size to 20%. And now we are going to make a line along this triangle. We'll start a little bit lower. We'll go up and back down like this. Then hold your pen in place to make it snap to a quick shape like this. And then I want to make the top a bit more tidy. 
Let's go to the selection tool, the S shear ribbon, set it to freehand, and then turn off color fill. Then we'll tap over here in this corner, then we'll go up here, then back down, then we'll loop around, close the selection, go to the layer, tap it, and then use clear like this. Now we have a nice top here. But I wanted this line to go along this side of our center area here. So I need some adjustments on this house. Let's first go to the move and transform tool. Make sure that it's set to uniform and make this triangle a little bit bigger. Let's turn off snapping actually over here. So I want it to align with that part. So it should be a bit like this. But when we do this, we do run into a few problems, but we can fix that. Let's go to the layer menu and go to this layer for instance. Then go to the selection tool, the S shear ribbon. Now we can just select that area that doesn't have that color yet. Close the selection, then go and grab the color that was the third color in the second row and just drag it in to fill that area. And then tap the S shape ribbon again. Then I also want the roof to be a little bit taller so we have a bit more space. So let's go to layer two, then to the move and transform tool set it to free form and drag the roof up just a little bit like this. This is perfect. We can continue. Let's go and make more roof parts. Let's go to this layer again, layer 14, grab the brush. It's still the that's a line brush. And for the color, we'll grab that first color in the second row again. And now let's make a roof part for this one. I do see that this one is a little bit too low right now. I wanted it to be at the same height as that roof over here. So first let's go to layer one and we'll go to the selection tool again. Our big friend, let's set it to freehand, select this triangle, close the selection and go to the arrow tool and move this up like this. I think it's about the same height right now. Doesn't have to be perfect. Now let's go back to the layer, layer 14, grab the brush, that's a line brush. And now let's add that part of the roof, just like we did with the other one. Hold your pen in place. You might need to use edit shape here at the top to adjust it a little bit. So it looks like this. And then we can use the S shape ribbon again tap in this corner, then here at the top, then down here, loop around, close the selection, go to the layer, tap the layer and use clear. Now finally, we need a little roof over here. Let's zoom out a little bit. We need a line like this. Should be at the same height as the one on the right. Let's just use edit shape here at the top so we can play around with it a little bit until we have what we need. I think this looks good actually. Let's tap the brush to get out of this little menu. And now we can extend this area. We have that light area over here, layer 13. And we want some of that light blue here at the top as well. Let's grab that color, fourth color in the second row. And you can either use the selection tool or you can grab a brush like the monoline brush. I just moved to the recent brushes here at the top in the brush library. There you can find the brushes that you have recently used. So you don't have to go through all the brush packs. So you can just make a shape here behind that area so that it's closed. And then you can drag in a color to fill that area. Now let's make some windows. Let's make a layer. On top of this one, let's just tap the plus. And then for the color, we are going to use this one over here, the sixth color in the second row. And let's use the selection tool again, set it to rectangle and then use color fill. And let's make a window over here. 
about this size and just go to the move and transform tool so you can move it around. I want it to be about here. Maybe we can make it a little bit bigger. Just set it to uniform here. Drag the handle. Let's go for something like this. Then we'll duplicate this layer. So go to the layer menu, drag to the left, tap duplicate, then go to the bottom one. I want to change the color on this one. So go to the color palette, then grab the fifth color in the second row and drag it onto the shape. You can't see anything right now, but when you go to your layer menu, you'll see that the bottom one is light right now. Now we'll go to the top one and we'll transform this one. We'll go to the arrow, the move and transform tool, make this a little bit smaller and place it in the center. Let's set it to free form so we can make this a little bit smaller so that all the sides have the same thickness like this Then tap the arrow again. And now I want another line like this, a vertical line. Let's go to this layer, this brownish layer and use the eraser. And I want to set the eraser to the that's a line brush. Let's first go to our regular brushes, tap the that's a line brush and then tap and hold the eraser. So now it's set to the that's a line brush. We'll set the size of this brush to 5% and I will make a vertical line here. Hold your pen in place and tap one finger on the screen to make it snap to a perfectly vertical line. Let's zoom out. I feel like it's not entirely centered. I feel like it should move a little bit to the right. No problem. We'll just do it again. There. Now we can duplicate this window. So we'll have another window here on the right side. Now to duplicate two layers at the same time, you can select both of them by dragging to the right and then you can just drag them onto your canvas and then you'll have two duplicate layers. Let me select both of these and move them over here so that they are close together in our menu, in our layer menu. Then go to the move and transform to the little arrow. Make sure you turn on snapping again over here and then drag it to the right and place it over here. Now to reduce your amount of layers, you can merge the two light layers. So drag this underneath here, merge these two and merge the brown layers. Now we are going to make another window. Let's tap this layer first and tap the plus for a new one. And we are going to duplicate this process, but we are going to create a different shaped window. Well, it's still, it's square or rectangle. It's just slightly different. Let's grab that brown color again, that sixth color in the second row and go to the selection tool. We still have it set to rectangle and color fill. And let's make a shape over here like this. I go to the move and transform tool, the little arrow, make sure that it's nicely centered. Let me turn off snapping. Sometimes it's just bugging a little bit. I want to place it about here. Then we'll duplicate this layer again. So drag to the left, tap duplicate. The bottom one will make light again. So grab the fifth color in the second row, drag it onto the shape. Then we'll go to the top shape. Then we'll go to the move and transform tool and make this one a little bit smaller. So drag the handles and create something like this. Then we'll go and grab the eraser again. And this time we'll make a little cross. So one vertical line and one horizontal line. Next we'll make another window over here in this little area. Let's first make a new layer. Again, if you want to save layers, you can actually merge this one with these and then put this one underneath and merge it with the other light layers. So now let's make a new layer. Let's tap the plus. So we're making it on top of these brown layers and we are going to use the selection tool again. Let's set the color to that brown six color and second row and make a tiny rectangle. 
Then go to the move and transform tool, the little arrow, place it in the center. Then go to the layer menu, duplicate this layer, tap the bottom one, grab that light color, fifth color in the second row, drag it onto the shape, then go to the top one, go to the move and transform tool and make this smaller. This is a very small little window. Then we'll go to the eraser again. And first we'll make a horizontal line. Hold your pen in place, tap one finger on the screen, and then we'll make two vertical ones. So now we have all of our windows. Again, let's preserve layers. Let's drag this one to the other light layers. Merge it here and merge these. Next, let's make our door. Let's go to layer 13 here. Let's tap the plus for a new layer. And now for our color, we are going to use this one over here. It's the seven color in the second row. Let's go to the selection tool again. We still have it set to rectangle and color fill is turned on. And now let's make a tall rectangle like this. Then go to the move and transform tool, the little arrow. We can set it to snapping to make sure that our door is in the center of our house like this. Let's actually make it a little bit wider. Then we'll duplicate this layer and we'll do the same thing we did with the window. So duplicate it, go to the bottom one. Then grab the light color, fifth color in the second row, drag it onto the shape. Then we'll go back to the top one. Go to the move and transform tool. Let me turn off snapping. And then make this shape a little bit smaller. Next, we will make a new layer on top of this one. Let's tap the plus. And for the color, we'll grab this one over here, the ninth color in the second row. We'll grab the selection tool again, and we'll make a little stair over here. A rectangle that's a bit wider than that light area for our door. And we'll make another layer on top. So go to the layer menu, tap the plus, and we'll go to the next color, which is the 10th color in the second row. Then go to the selection tool again, and then we'll make a bit of a smaller one, a little bit lower, like this. And we need some final touches on our house. For instance, I want a light edge under these roofs. So let's go to the layer menu and then make a layer underneath these roof layers. Let's tap layer 15 here and then tap the plus for a new layer. And then for the color, we are going to grab this one over here, the fourth color in the second row. And for our brush, that that's a line brush. And we're just going to follow this edge, hold your pen in place, and go to edit shape. So you have complete control over these, these lines here. So like this, then we'll tap the brush again. Now when we need to do this one, we'll go over this area as well, and we won't be able to see the line very well. So let's go to the layer menu and turn a layer 13 off for now. Now we can make another line along this edge. Hold your pen in place and go to edit shape and make it a line over here. And tap the brush, do the same over here. Again, you can just go to edit shape and have full control over that line. Then tap the brush again We'll go for this area and use edit shape for a nice thin edge. And tap the brush, another edge, use edit shape. There, now we have these nice lines. I want two more though. Let's first go to the layer menu. Let me turn on layer 13 again. And we'll go to layer one over here. We'll tap the plus for a new layer and for our color, we are going to grab this fifth color in the second row. First, we'll make a horizontal line over here. Tap 
tap your finger on the screen to make sure that it's perfectly horizontal. And I want to make another one right here. Hold your pen in place, tap one finger on the screen. And then finally, we need a little chimney for our house. We need a new layer for that. We can actually make it on top of this one. Let's tap the plus for a new layer. And for our color, we are going to use this one over here, the seven color in the second row. Then let's go to the S shape ribbon again for a rectangular selection with color fill turned on. And let's make a long rectangle over here. Then let's go to the move and transform tool, the little arrow here, and let's warp it a little bit. Let's tap warp and give it a little bit of, well, like a curve over here. You can actually pull this one up here so that it's not coming out here. So a little bit like this, a little bit curved. Then we'll make a new layer on top by going to the layer menu, tapping the plus, I go to the selection tool, and then make another small shape here on top. And then tap the S shape ribbon again to get out of the menu. Now that we have all the shapes, it's time to go ahead and add all of the textures, the most fun part of this illustration. And we will be creating our own brush. Let's get started with the texture on our sky. We'll make a new layer by tapping the plus and we will drag this color all the way to the bottom, right on top of our background color. Then for the color, we will grab this one over here, first color in the third row. And for our brush, we are going to go to the treasure chest brush pack again and use the spackle brush. Now the opacity of this brush is set to 75% and the size is set to 45%. And now let's go over our sky. Let's just go over the entire sky first. So we have texture everywhere. And then we'll go over the top area multiple times to make it a bit darker over there. So like this. Perhaps a little bit over here underneath the trees. And now we are going to use the selection tool, the S shape ribbon, set it to freehand, turn off color fill, and we are going to make some of these random shapes. A bit pointy, close the selections, some over here, close that selection. Then we'll grab the brush again. And for the color, we'll grab that first color in the first row. And I'll just go over that selection with our brush so that we'll get a light effect there. Then tap the S shape ribbon again to turn off the selection and now you see that very subtle effect in our sky. Next, let's work on our trees. Let's go to this layer, layer five, and let's turn on alpha lock. So we won't be able to go outside of the shape. For the color, we'll grab this one over here, the second color and the third row. Again, we'll grab the selection tool and we'll make these rounded selections going along these, these branches like this. Then we'll go underneath, close that selection. So that bottom part is selected. Now grab the brush and go along that edge to create something of a shadow there. Making rounded motions and turn off the selection by tapping the S shape ribbon. And let's do the same for the other side. So tap the S shape ribbon again. And I make another selection like this. Loop underneath, close the selection, then grab the brush and go over that area. Then turn off the selection. And now let's make some extra shapes. We'll grab the selection tool again and we'll make some of these random, almost like banana shapes. Just for some extra touches. And grab the brush again, go over these areas. Then turn off the selection. And now let's grab a lighter color. Let's grab this one. 
that third color and the third row. And let's add a little bit of light here at the top. And also a little bit here underneath. Do the same on this side. You can see I'm making rounded motions. A little bit here underneath. Now we have nicely textured tree crowns. Now we'll move on to the tree trunk and the branches. Let's go to the layer, tap it, turn on alpha lock. And now for our color, let's grab this last color in the second row. And at first, let's make a little bit of shadow here at the top. That's in shadow because those leaves, that tree crown is blocking the light there. So again, some rounded motions, make those tops darker. And then we are going to switch our brush to the round chalk brush, which is also part of the treasure chest brush pack. The opacity of this brush is at 100% and the size, let's set that to 5%. And now we are going to add some of these markings on our tree so that it looks like a birch tree. Do some of these random markings. You can make some all the way from the left to the right, and you can make some a little bit shorter. Then on this side as well. Try to keep it a little bit varied. So you should get something like this. Now let's move on to the bushes, which are on layer four here. First, turn on alpha lock. And then for the brush, we will go back to the spackle brush. For our color, we are going to grab this one over here. Fourth color and the third row. Let's go over these bushes, adding some shadow. On this side as well, let me make the canvas a little bit smaller or zoom out. And let's switch to an even darker color, the fifth color in the third row, just for that underside. A little bit more shadow. Now let's also add some orange touches. Let's grab this color, the sixth color in the first row. And we'll gently go over the tops of these bushes. Over here as well. And then we'll switch to our round chalk brush and grab that nice red, that second color in the third row. And we'll add some berries. Now the shapes I'm using in this illustration, I am using them on purpose. The house has some, some triangular and rectangular shapes with like sharp corners and everything else has these rounded shapes. We have the rounded pumpkins, the fence has rounded shapes, the trees. And a contrast will add interest to the illustration just like the contrast in color. We have a complementary color scheme here. The blue is a complementary color of the orange we see in this illustration. So by using the contrast in shapes and in color, we will make our house pop out of our illustration more. So now that we have done the bushes, let's move on to the grass. That's layer three. Let's turn on alpha lock there. And then for the color, let's first grab this one, fourth color, third row. And let's just go over our grass, not with the round chalk brush. First, we need to go and grab the spackle brush Settings are still the same. And we'll just go over and add some of that spackly texture. Now 
Under the pumpkins, there will be more shadows. So let's grab that darker color, the fifth color in the third row. And they are casting a little bit of a shadow on the grass. So let's make these rounded motions underneath our pumpkins to add more shadow there. I also want to add some warmth to the grass, so let's grab a warm orange like this one, the seven color in the first row. And let's gently glaze over the grass for just a little bit of warmth. Now let's move on to our path. I do feel like maybe we can adjust it a little bit. I feel like the curve is a little bit off. Let's just go to the layer, layer 13, then go to the move and transform tool. And let's see if we can warp it a little bit. Let's just change the curve a bit. Just make sure that it still touches that bottom part. I think this looks a bit better. Then go tap the arrow again. And now let's add texture to our path. First, we need to turn on alpha lock. And then for our color, let's grab, let's grab this one, ninth color in the second row. And let's just go over the path, add some of that darker texture. Now let's make a bunch of selections by using the S shape ribbon, set to freehand. Let's just make some random oval shapes. And as you move towards the viewer, try making them a little bit bigger as you go. Of course, there will be some that are smaller. Perhaps a little small one here, trying to fill those gaps. Then grab the brush, then grab a color. Let's grab this one over here, sixth color, third row. And let's just go over, add some more light. I think we can go even lighter. Let's grab this color, second color in the first row. For a little bit of light on our path. Then I would like to invert our selection, tap and hold the S shape ribbon to get back to the selection menu and over here, tap invert. And I'll grab a darker color. Let's grab this one, six color, second row. Then grab the brush, make the brush a little bit smaller. Let's set it to 10% and let's go along the edges of these ovals, the underside of these ovals. Just go along all of them for a slight little shadow. And then turn off the selection by tapping the S shape ribbon. Now we have an interesting looking path. Let's move on to the fence. Where is it? All the way at the top here. Let's start with the part that is behind the, the horizontal part. Let's turn on alpha lock and for the color Let's grab this one over here, sixth color in the third row. First, let's set the brush size to 45% again. Now let's gently go over, just like this. Now let's make the brush smaller. Let's set it to 10% again. And then on this side, let's add a little bit of shadow on the right side of these planks. And over here, let's do it on the left side. Just for a little bit more depth. Then for some texture on the vertical planks, layer 10, let's turn on alpha lock. And then for our color, let's grab this color. The third color in the first row. We'll make the brush big again. We'll set it to 45%. And we'll gently go over these planks just for a subtle texture. Now let's move on to our pumpkins. 
First, we'll go to this layer, layer nine, which has the stems. We'll turn on alpha lock here. And for the color, we'll grab this dark green. That's the fifth color in the first row. Let's zoom in a little bit. And let's just add a little bit of texture. Then we'll go on and add texture to our pumpkins. Let's start with the big ones. That's layer seven. Let's turn on alpha lock. And now for our color, we'll grab this red one over here. Second color in the third row. Then we'll grab the selection tool. And we'll make a selection following this curve. So we'll go up like this. And like this. And we'll close the selection here. Then we'll grab our brush which is still set to the spackle brush. And we'll set the size of the brush to 10%. And we'll add a slight shadow here at the bottom. And we'll grab a light color for the top. We'll grab this color over here, the third color and the third row. Add a little bit of light there. Then we'll tap and hold the S shape ribbon and we will invert the selection. Now we can grab that red color again. Now to switch to your previous color, you can just tap and hold the circle. So now we have the red again. And now we can go over this area for a little bit of shadow there. And here at the top, we'll want that lighter color again. So let's tap and hold the circle again for some light here at the top. I also want some light over here and some dark in that crease. So tap and hold and add the red underneath here. Now let's make a new selection. So tap the S shape ribbon and tap it again. And then make another curved selection like this. Close the selection. Grab the brush and add some shadow here. And grab that light color. We can just tap and hold again. And add some light on this side. And tap and hold the selection tool. Invert the selection. Then grab the brush. And then add some light over here. And tap the S shape ribbon again. And we can actually add an extra crease over here. Let's grab the S shape ribbon. Make a selection like this. Then grab the brush, add light along this edge. Then tap and hold the S shape ribbon. Use invert, grab the red color, and go along this edge. Then tap the S shape ribbon again. Now this way, by making these curved selections, you can shade all of these pumpkins. Let me do another one. Let's tap the S shape ribbon. Make a curve like this. Close the selection. Grab the brush. Add a shadow to the underside. Then grab the lighter color and add light to the top side. And tap and hold the S shape ribbon. Invert the selection. Grab the dark color again or some shadow over here and over here. Tap and hold for the lighter color and add light to the top. Tap the S shape ribbon. And you know what? Let me magically add the texture to all of these pumpkins. Now that we have added shading to our pumpkins, we can move on to the house. Let's start with the big shape of the house. That's layer one over here. Let's turn on alpha lock. And now for our color, let's grab this color over here. It's the seventh color in the third row. Let's make the brush bigger. Let's set it to 45%. And let's go along this edge, for instance. For a little bit of shadow, also a little bit here at the bottom. Also for a little bit of interest. Then here at the top. 
And then we'll go a little bit darker. We'll grab this color over here, the eight color in the third row, and we'll make our brush a little bit smaller. We'll set it to 10% again. And let's go underneath this edge, add a shadow there and over here as well. Just multiple strokes. Do the same here at the top. I see I'm totally forgetting about that area. Let's go back there in a sec. We'll go underneath these windows for a little bit of shadow there. And a tiny bit here at the top. Let's first grab that other color again, seven color in the third row for this area. First some subtle texture. And then we'll switch to the darker one, the eight color and the third row. And we'll add a darker shadow here at the top. And a little bit underneath here. Then let's add some to the windows where we have our windows over here, layer 15. Let's turn on alpha lock and let's add a little bit of orange there. Let's grab this color, six color, first row. Let's set the brush to 45% again. And let's just go over the top of the windows and add a little bit of that warm glow. Just like this. We're going to do the same for the door. I'm also aware that I forgot a little basic shape for our door, but we'll just add that in a minute. Let's go to layer 17, turn on alpha lock there, and let's add a little bit of that orange here as well, just at the top like this. And then let's make another basic shape here at the on top of this door. Let's tap the plus for a new layer, go to the selection tool, set it to rectangle, turn on color fill, and then for the color, we'll grab this one over here. That's the eight color in the second row. And then let's make a selection for a little window in our door like this. Now let's also add some texture immediately to this layer. So go to the layer menu, turn on alpha lock on this layer. And then for the color, we'll grab this red. That's second color in the third row for the brush. We are still using the spackle brush. And we'll just go over the top here, just a little. Let's also add a doorknob on this layer. For that, we are going to use the round chalk brush and we are going to use an orange, this one, the sixth color in the first row. And of course, we also need to turn on alpha lock if we want to add a doorknob here. So tap the layer, turn off alpha lock. And then over here, let's make a little doorknob. Now let's move on to this layer, layer 13. Let's turn on alpha lock. Then for the color, let's grab this one first. That's the seventh color in the third row. And now for the brush, we need to go back to the spackle brush. And the size is set to 45%. And let's go over the top here. Just a little, then we'll go back to that dark color, the eight color in the third row. We'll make the brush smaller. We'll set it to 10% and we'll add more shadow here at the top. Next, let's also add some spackles to those roof parts. And I see I forgot that little window here. Let's go back to that window, layer 15. We need the orange, six color. And let's add a little bit over there. All right, then for our roofs, layer 14, we'll turn on alpha lock. And for our color, we'll use this one over here, last color, third row. And we'll set the size back to 45% and we'll just gently go over these roof parts for a little bit of texture, just like that. Now let's do something similar for this layer, the lighter part of the roof. First turn on alpha lock and then for the color, let's grab this one over here. The second color in the second row. Let's just go over for a little bit of interest. Now we're almost there. You're doing great. Let's work on our roof like the roof roof layer two. Let's turn on alpha lock first. And then let's add 
some color. Let's grab this first color in the second row. And let's just go over the roof for a basic layer of texture. You probably can barely see it on camera, but it's there. Then let's grab this color over here, the last color in the third row. And now we are going to work with selections. Let's grab the S shape ribbon, set it to rectangle, but make sure to turn off color fill. And we'll make a selection like this. Don't go all the way to the top. Then grab the brush and then go along that edge to create a little shadow there. Just a few strokes, then tap the S shape ribbon again and then again and make another selection just a little bit lower. Grab the brush again, go along the edge and then make another selection. We'll do this until we are at the bottom of our roof. Grab the brush, add a little shadow, then make a new selection like this. Grab the brush. New selection, grab the brush, and then some more shadow here. Just a little bit at the bottom, and then tap the S shape ribbon again. Now we are going to make some other selections, so tap the S shape ribbon again, but now set it to freehand, and make a line like this. Go back up, close the selection, and grab the brush, Set it to a smaller size, 10%. And then on these parts of the roof, go along these edges, but just for a portion. So not all along the edge. Make a new selection. Tap the S shape ribbon again. Let's make one like this. This time, close the selection, grab the brush. And we'll make some more of these shadow parts. Then another selection. Let's make one like this. Loop around, close the selection. And again, just in some parts, make these shadows. Then make another selection so we can also make these shapes on this side. Grab the brush and repeat this until you have a nice variation. Just create some of these edges to create the suggestion of roof tiles. For instance, we can make one over here. So just grab the selection tool. Make a selection like this, grab the brush and add a little shadow here. Turn off the selection and see if you got a nice balance. I guess we could make another one here maybe. Selection, then the brush and then a little shadow and then turn off the selection again. I think this is looking great. Now let's add texture to these, well, to this little stair over here. Where is that layer? Over here. First, layer 19, turn on alpha lock. Let's go and grab different color. For instance, this dark one, the eight color in the second row. Let's add a little bit of shadow. And then also some light. Let's grab an orangey color like this one. Third color in the third row. And a little bit of light at the top. And then let's move to the other one, layer 20. Let's turn on alpha lock here. And then again, let's first grab the dark color. Let's use this one, this time seven color in the second row. Let's go over. And then maybe also some light, maybe this color, six color in the first row for a little touch of light at the top. Now for our chimney, let's move on to our chimney. We have it over here on layer 23 and 24. I do feel like our, our chimney is a little bit 
a little bit thin. Let's make it a bit bigger. Let's select both of these layers then go to the move and transform tool, set it to free form and let's pull this edge a little bit. I like this. Now we do need to get rid of that part. So let's grab the eraser and just erase that part. And now let's go ahead and add some texture. Let's turn on alpha lock on this layer. And then let's grab this color, ninth color in the second row. Let's make the brush bigger. Let's set it to 45%. Then let's just go over and add a little bit of texture. Then we'll grab the darker color, this one, the eight color in the second row. And now let's go ahead and grab the round chalk brush and set the color to this last one in the second row. And then we'll make some of these little like brick shapes, a little bit rounded. Just like this. You don't have to give it too much thought. Just some random, random stuff here. Then we'll grab that spackle brush again. And we'll grab a different color. We'll grab that base color of our chimney. That six color and or seven, seven color in the second row. I'm sorry. And just go over. And then finally some orange. We'll grab this one, six color in the first row. Let's go over the side like this. And then finally, we also need some texture on layer 24. Let's tap that, turn on alpha lock and then add some orangey there as well. Now this is looking great. We have added texture everywhere. Now I just want to add some fall leaves here and to create those easily, we are going to make our own brush. Now to do that, we need to go to any of the brush packs you have. You just tap the plus here at the top, then go to shape, then tap the shape source here. Then go to import, tap source library, and then scroll to the bottom until you find a leaf. Where is it? These are all Procreate standard dabs. There, we have the garden leaf source. So tap that, then tap done, and then go to stroke path. Now over here, we'll turn up the spacing We'll set it to 65% and that means these dabs are further away from each other. We'll also turn up the jitter and you can see that they are moving apart from each other. They, there's a certain randomness. Let's set it to 58%. Then go back to shape and we'll turn up the scatter. This will make them rotate in a random way. Let's set it to, for instance, 114% and we'll also turn up the rotation. Let's turn it all the way to here to make it follow the stroke. Now we need to go to Apple Pencil and we need to turn down the opacity because when you have it turned up, the harder you press, the more opaque your brush stroke will become. But I want the brush stroke to be like 100% opaque all the time because these leaves, they aren't transparent. Now, now you can go to about this brush. Now over here, you can add a name, add your photo, add your own name, all that stuff. I'll also be adding this brush to the treasure chest brush pack in case you don't feel like making this yourself. Now let me just enter the name and my logo. All right, now let's go ahead and use this brush. Let's tap done. There we have our new brush. For the color, we are going to grab this color over here, that second color in the third row. And we are going to make a new layer over here. Above layer nine, we want to stay underneath our fence layer. So let's tap the plus here and let's set the size of our brush to 60%. The opacity is at 100. And now let's go over our sky here and add some random leaves here as well. You can just make a couple of dabs. Also some leaves here on the floor, on the grass. Till you have a nice variation 
of leaves. I think this is this is all right, but when we zoom in, you can see that our brush has this leaf texture and it doesn't really fit our style, this style of illustration. Now the way to fix that is by just duplicating this layer. Let's slide to the left and tap duplicate. And when you look now, you can see that it's well pretty much opaque. It doesn't have texture anymore. We can merge these two layers. And when we duplicate it again, you can see that it's really totally opaque. Let's merge these as well. Now we can turn on alpha lock on this layer. And we can change the color of some of these leaves. Let's grab a different brush. For instance, the script brush or the monoline brush doesn't really matter. Then for the color, let's grab this one, six color in the first row. And let's just go over some of these leaves to just add some color variation because not all of these leaves have the same color. It'll add some interest. And just select a few. We can also grab another color. We can also use this one, third color and the third row for some even lighter leaves. So you'll get something like this and then you can add an extra touch by grabbing the spackle brush. Let's set it to this color or maybe this one. Let's grab this one, the seven color in the second row. And we'll just go over these leaves and add just a tiny bit of texture. And there you have it. You have created a blue house and a fall landscape. I hope you have enjoyed the process. If you did, then why not turn it into a streak? Perhaps you'll like to follow this tutorial. I would like to thank you for watching and thank you for your support here on this channel. And I will see you next time for the next tutorial.